Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. I am JT Bear, and today we are going to have, um, well, I'd call it fun, but that's kind of sarcastic. Today we're going to spend a little time building a uh, decorative accent fence for the gnome garden out of simple stick and string, because for some strange reason I seem to be getting wildlife tromping through my gnome garden. Here, let me show you the wildlife I'm talking about. Right there. Oh yeah, wild as can be, that one. But for some reason, he keeps tromping through my gnome garden and knocking over my onions. So today, a stick and string fence. All right, luckily for me, considering my tool supply, I don't need a lot to make this happen. So that'll be quick and easy. Shouldn't take long. Well, it started off as a nice clear day. Got some clouds coming in now, though. We'll see how long we can hang out today. Just get started easy enough here. Measure and cut. That one should be just about long enough for a corner peg now that I look at it. Alright, two corner posts cut. End piece cut. And in theory, can't really get far enough away from this position, but it'll sit something like that. In theory. Well, that is a terrible knot, but hopefully good enough to do the trick. In theory, this is just a decorative fence. I'd say that second bit of string work looks a whole lot better than the first, but it works. That's what matters. From a distance, it's not so bad. A little flintstone-y, but whatever. Rustic. Yes, that's the word. Rustic. Well, you know, my knot tying, uh, I suppose, is improving a little bit. It's coming along, coming along. Got to clean up some space here now so I can actually work there. All right. Let's get some of this done and then we'll get back to you. Well, slow and steady, but coming along, coming along. Not sure I'm going to have enough to finish this back piece by the barbecue. May have to uh, cut down some local trees, or trim one anyway. Because they're all coming from that kind of tree right there. They call it a tree heaven. I think this thing is amazing with how fast it grows, but it's freaking tall. I just need that one branch off the bottom though, I think. Just to prevent it falling on the greenhouse, you know. Well, typical lack of planning on my part. I don't have a piece to go along the back there. Not going to cut one down today, though, because I don't think I need it. Since I'm pretty sure the creature getting into my gnome garden is right there. Looks so sweet and innocent when he's asleep, doesn't he? Yeah. Alright, well, next I guess it's a glass of water and then uh, into the greenhouse because I am going to transplant that little yellow plum tree today. So, alright, let's carry on. So here is that little cutting from the yellow plum. The one that made it, it's got a couple of little roots. I just prepared a coffee can, the little planting pot, and some grape twigs at the bottom there. I've been making a great deal of use of those since the uh, wicking tote, because I think that seems to be working out okay. I still need to do an update on that. You know what, maybe I'll throw that in today. But anyway, and over here, some compost. All right. Okay, so I've got my grape twigs in there. Dump in some compost. Doo -doo. I'll tell ya, it's kind of interesting just doing a hanging out sort of in the yard video. I guess this is a genuine garden vlog, isn't it? Oh well. First time for everything. Normally I'm just babbling about individual things. Today it's everything I'm doing. Anyway, here is my container ready to go. Just gonna pre-water that with the aquaponic stuff here. I'll get those pebbles out before I plant this through. Well, the clay ones anyway. And the roots on that do not look good. Not looking good at all. A little too moist, I think. Just top this up. Bounce it down like a cake. <laughs> and I think this poor thing might need to start off new roots all over again. Not good. 
I guess that means a light watering and then into the shade. But if it makes it, that's a whole lot more room for it. Here's something to share before I take out of the greenhouse because it's just too hot. My little blue already has a pepper forming. Actually, there are a couple. So, that's really exciting. To me, anyway, beautiful little pepper. Very, very hot. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, step into the shed in the box because it's so hot in that greenhouse. There's sweat on my sweat. That's just terrible. I have got to put in my windows for the summer. Still haven't cut those out yet. But uh, we get so much wind and they flap around so much. And There's just a couple of things I want to do this year. I'd like to actually make a, a proper solid window that opens. I'd like to um, check out. There's those, I want to call it hydraulic piston operated window openers that uh, automatically open at certain temperatures and close at others so I'd like to get my hands on one of those and fiddle with that in the greenhouse this year so well we'll see I gotta get something in there for windows though but either way we're in the shed in a box now working on those honey berries hoping those roots don't look as bad as they did on the little tree oh my they were doing so well I would really suck if I killed them at this point well moment of truth as it were big reveal do 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 did the roots make it I do this with one hand. Oh, I still see ample roots. Excellent. I'm going to separate those. Well, now that I've got them separated in there, it doesn't look so bad. Might be some hope for these. Hope so, anyway. I've got a permaculture garden I want to go visit and deposit a few of these at. Well, that's not so bad. Looks almost like it's supposed to. You'd almost think I knew what I'm doing. Almost. Well, looks like those are good to go. Water them from the bottom with some of the aquaponic water. Let them soak that up for a while. Alright. Next. Oh yeah, the tote. Said I'd give y'all an update on this wicking tote that I did so completely left of center. And yet, you know, for the most part, look at that. That's insane, right? It's definitely some good growth. Granted, most of that growth is somewhat unidentifiable, but good growth all the same. Let's take a look in there. Well, can we identify this is a sunflower seed. Um, it sprouted up in a random location in the yard. I poked a hole in the tote, stuffed it in there, and it seems to be getting more than enough water. This jungle is uh, the cress from that sprouting seeds incident. I... Uh, just kind of plunked it on here in its gooey little mess that it was. And it seems to be growing just fine. Aside from rain, this really only gets the water that's in the tube. Shocks took some out the other day. We had uh, fried egg sandwiches with a nice layer of this in there. Oh, stuff's really good, kind of peppery. Quite delicious. If you haven't tried growing cress, it's ridiculously easy. Don't mind the slime on the seeds. And uh, yeah, give it a go. Give it a go. Uh, excellent crop for beginning gardeners. Anyway, carrying on with the tote. Off in the side here, I sprinkled that random lettuce mix, or the like 10 seeds that were left of it. And I think that there might be a lettuce, and I think that there might be a lettuce. But the rest of these I can't identify well enough, so... If you know that any of these are edible leaves, let me know. Try and identify the leaf well, and I'll give it a taste. Just please don't be messing with me, because that's not cool. All right, now, I also planted three jalapeno jalapa peppers in here back when I first brought this thing out. And uh, I will be honest, a couple of them died. It was just too cold, I figure, because, you know, like, look at the growth in here, right? But this is a replacement that I planted in here at the same depth. It seems to be doing okay, aside from the fact that it can't get any sun. Let's see, back here we've got, here's another one shaded to no end but it's alive so it's getting the water isn't it and then back here where is it there we go it's in here there we go is the last one this one here is um, actually one of the original plantings so I'm surprised it's alive at all between the cold and the heat and the cold and the heat I wouldn't have made it anywho so there you go just fill it up through the tube here Looks a little bit low, but pretty much okay. My little overflow drainage here seems to work just fine. Get a little fountain out of there when I'm filling it up. I know it's time to turn it off. But yeah, there you go. 
Closing update on the uh, wicking tote. Seems to work just fine. I may need to plant something different in this side or move those peppers over to this side, but yeah. You may or may not see this later in the season. It could just continue on for cress. Who knows? So as some of you who have been watching my channel for a while may be aware, we have these grapes that easily qualify as antiques. They were planted like 50, 60 years ago. My landlord grew up in this house with these grapes, okay? Seriously, these are old grapes. They go all the way along the fence line there to behind the shed in a box. And uh, I was told there are like three or four different varieties here. But in reality, there are only two of them that I care about at all. One is those purple grapes that uh, I used for the grape jelly on uh, the Bear in the Kitchen channel. If you haven't seen that, check that out. No sugar. It's a quick jelly, but I tell you, it uh, doesn't matter that it has no shelf life. It doesn't stick around long enough for that to be a problem. But here I've pulled down one of the branches of the, uh, the light green grapes. I think someone told me they're called Concord grapes. But I don't care what they're called. They are the sweetest, most delicious, and unfortunately seed-free grapes I have ever had in my life. So when we finally do leave this place, I want a grapevine of my own from each of those varieties, but at least from the greens. So today, I'm going to take the aquaponic attempt and uh, clip off an end, but I got a few different tries, or a few different methods I should say, that I'm going to try with this, because like I say, I want at least one and uh, I don't care if I have multiples and I want no room for failure. So if you've got any grape cuttings advice other than cut it and stick it into the ground, please feel free to leave it below. Or you know, for that matter, if you're a firm advocate of just sticking it into the ground, comment. We'll see how many thumbs up it gets. Alright, quick clipping. So when I take cuttings of things for my aquaponics, I basically look for what appears to be the growing end of any given plant. Looks like this would qualify. Alright, now I figure I'm going to want probably six to eight inches of that and we're going to strip some leaves off it. Show you that in a second. Very convenient to be doing these projects over the compost. Ha, speaking of which, here's something that would never have made it into a video on its own. This is this, um, it's a random stand of volunteer sunflowers. I just kind of started up in the new compost that I just put here this year, so it's very interesting that they clumped up and not spread out, but whatever. The birds will be thrilled and it means I don't have to plant a uh, sunflower garden for them this year. But anyway, we're doing a grape cutting, so let's get on with that. Alright, well, as a general statement, I've had my most success with rooting things in the flood and drain aquaponics, so I'm going to make a little spot for it here in the corner and uh, show you what that looks like. Not really into the sciencey part of the whole aquaponics all that much yet. I will be soon though, but my basic thoughts on this, the roots form because it's trying to chase the water as it escapes towards the drain. But anyway, most of the time that seems to work. Last go of hardwood uh, tree cuttings didn't go so well, but <laughs> look at that tomato. All right, hey, I got to, uh, actual tomatoes forming on this. How awesome is that? Too cool. Even after all that cutting. And those cuttings, by the way, seem to be doing just fine. That huge one there is looking a little uh, wilty and kind of saggy, but the end of it has perked up, so I think it'll work out okay in the long run. All right, too hot to stay in here for long. Maybe just a little too warm in here. Maybe. All right, everybody, I think I'm gonna wrap up this video for today, but it's been kind of fun having uh, the camera and you guys hanging out with me uh, doing my various bits of yard work today. And uh, yeah, whatever, it's been, uh, it's been a slice. Thanks for joining me, everybody, and uh, have yourselves a fantastic day.